Oh. Oh, I needed that. Dream win 88 to 86 over the Los Angeles Sparks. Holy crap, let's talk about this game. It's another must win for the Dream. Playoff implications just keep getting greater and greater, especially against another team on the playoff bubble. Now, the injury report is the same as it was last time, and we recently learned that Nia Coffey is going to be out for the rest of the season with a knee injury. Now, the last two Dream wins, Atlanta outscored the Aces and the Fever by a combined 114-70 in the first half. For the last four games that the Dream lost, however, the opponents outscored Atlanta a combined 184 to 140 in the first half. So a strong start like they did versus Atlanta, I'm sorry, versus Indiana last time out is absolutely critical. But so is finishing, something they almost didn't do the last time out. The Dream are wearing the best third jerseys in the league, so no matter what they do, at least they're going to look good doing it. Brittany Sykes draws first blood, overcoming some pretty oppressive Dream defense after both teams commit a turnover each in about a minute. Then Ryan Howard gets Atlanta on the board with a three, then after running down the shot clock, trying to find the perfect spot, cycling the ball, keeping their feet moving, Howard gets open for yet another three. Cheyenne Parker gets in on the action, not just with her scoring, but by drawing two fouls in two minutes. And credit Erica Wheeler for helping move plays along and just finding space for Howard and Parker. Not to mention Nas Hillman for picking up offensive rebounds and cleaning up after them when she needs to. It's 15-6 to six with six minutes left in the first, exactly the intensity the Dream needed. The Sparks call a timeout, and it turns out to be a pretty good move. They go on a 7-0 run while the Dream can't seem to hit a damn thing, at least until Ryan Howard gets fouled by Jasmine Walker, who committed a flagrant foul on Howard in mid-shot. So Howard hit all three, three, all three free throws to make them pay for it, and she already made the three-pointer on the play on which she got fouled. So she essentially scored six points in a single possession. Cheyenne Parker has seven points at this point early on in the game. Together with Ryan Howard, they have 21 out of the Dream's 23 points. Maya Caldwell makes sure that we still remember that she's on this team by hitting a three, and then another one. Now, as great as the offense is, defensively there could have been some improvements. I mean, Brittany Sykes and Neko Gumake are keeping this game from being a blowout, scoring easier than they should be. But still, 34-24, dream lead after one. Starting the second quarter, things are pretty even. Not a whole lot of movement in the scoring gap, although both teams are definitely still scoring. The dream had been dominating in the first quarter, but we've seen this movie before. This team is notorious for letting go of just crushing leads in the first quarter or the first half, so I'm being cautiously optimistic here. Big emphasis on cautious. Erica Wheeler is definitely one of the most nimble dream players I have ever seen. I mean, Erin McDonald is pretty nimble herself, but she tends to kind of overdo it at times, which is not necessarily a bad thing. She's still young, and she's definitely going to learn you know, to control as she plays more. But Wheeler just has so much poise. I'm definitely going to buy a jersey with her name on it. Chrissy Wallace loses her footing and still manages to hand the ball off to Parker even though she's sitting right on her ass, starting a sequence leading to Beatrice Montpremier getting a two-pointer in style. Jordan Canada showing off some fancy footwork of her own to get a highlight-worthy two-pointer, taking notes from Erica Wheeler most likely. Now, remember when I said the Dream were good at letting leads slip? Well, the Sparks go on a 12-2 run to end a half. Atlanta still leads, but only by two points. It's 47 to 45. The Dream were giving Sykes a little too many free throws, and they couldn't really get past LA's coverage too much. They were they were on point with their zone and man-to-man -man coverage, or woman-to-woman, -woman, I guess, or non-binary. Look, in my house, we respect pronouns. You got a problem with that? Probably the best special guest I've seen so far this season. The greatest Atlanta Dream player of all time, Angel McCautry, is in the house. I hope that the next time she's here, she's getting her number retired. Without her, this team probably either folds or moves. Ryan Howard is not starting for the third quarter. Probably because she hasn't scored all second and she has two fouls. But she was on a pretty damn hot streak in the first, so, you know, why mess with that? Just let her drive to the net and draw more fouls, all right? Katie Lou Samuelson scores LA's first three-pointer of the game to start the scoring in the third. Cheyenne Parker shows her fighting spirit by lobbing the ball into the net through LA's coverage. But Brittany Sykes is just too good on the other end of the court. She's keeping the dream from retaking the lead. LA goes on a 22-6 run spread out over the last uh, two quarters, and Sykes is a huge reason why. 
Now Ryan Howard comes back into the game, and immediately she hits a three to tie the game, her first point since the first quarter, and she gets the defensive assignment of covering Sykes. Maya Caldwell gets a quick two and later on draws a foul at the post, hits both free throws, helping to keep this game competitive and to keep from Ryan Howard from stealing all of the spotlight. Although at this point, she's just let her have it. Ryan heats right back up and scores her 23rd point of the night, good for her 10th game this season in which she's scored 20 or more points. And Atlanta's defense forces the Sparks to take two consecutive shot clock violations. Howard drives to the rim once again, but collides with Olivia Nelson Odota. She drew the foul, but she looked a little uncomfortable as she walked to the free throw line, kind of limping a little bit. But she got both of her free throws, because of course she did. And despite some idling in the dream zone, she got right back into it and drew yet another foul. Of course she hit both of her free throws. At the end of the third, 71-61, the dream lead. In attendance tonight, Dwight Howard, one-time Atlanta Hawk, all-time great. To start the fourth quarter, Jordan Canada swims through Atlanta's coverage and passes it to a wide-open Lexi Brown for the two-pointer. One bad turnover later, Lexi Brown goes coast-to-coast -coast for another two. Ari McDonald picks up a charging foul on Brittany Sykes, who scores on the turnover. Atlanta calls a timeout, and rightfully so. Hillman and Parker take advantage of three straight turnovers by the Sparks, so that timeout really worked. Maya Caldwell is in serious danger of a shot clock violation. She has nowhere to go, so she just sprints to the nearest blank space she can find and hits a three anyway. But Lexi Brown is still here. She ties the game with a pair of free throws and a three-pointer. Cheyenne Parker breaks the tie, but with two minutes left, it's a one-point game. Neko Ogumike ties it, and then Ari McDonald takes it right back. Timeout with six seconds left. The Atlanta Dream lead by three. Samuelson hits the three-pointer to tie the game with two and a half seconds left. Another timeout. Erica Wheeler gets the ball to Parker. She says, screw your defense, and gets the two. Half a second left. NECA gets the shot off on three-point range, but it was not in time. Game over. Dream win of such a close one. Probably the closest one of the season, 88-66. to Now, the Dream did let the lead slip away, but unlike what we're all painfully used to by now, what makes this game different is that the Sparks did not run away with it. I mean, they kept it competitive, and they threatened to take it away from the Dream, but they didn't completely shut them down. Huge, huge difference tonight. And that, along with the euphoria of the final seconds of this game, absolutely can carry Atlanta to the playoffs. The Sparks are one and a half games out of a playoff spot. They have a remaining schedule of Washington, Connecticut, Connecticut again, and Dallas. The Liberty and the Dream have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker. So the Sparks aren't 100% mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, but with a schedule like that and those circumstances, I, I say they're not making it. The next game is Sunday, where the Dream hosts the Minnesota Lynx. I hope I'll see you then.